In this chapter, we will be continuing your study of trigonometry. In this lesson, we will solve equations using special triangles. Okay, well, two lessons ago in this course, we were looking at solving um, trig ratio, sorry, trig equations, simple trig equations. And then the last lesson, we were looking at uh, special triangles, which, which really wasn't intended to, to move us forward so much in terms of trigonometry, but just give us another way of, of evaluating for certain angles uh, and get them in exact form here. Now what we want to do is put them together, okay? And so what we're going to need to remember here as we go through this is that if you've got the 45 degree triangle here, this has got to be 1, 1, root 2. And if you've got the, the 30... 60, 90 triangle. This is going to be 1, 2, and root 3. And then we want to make sure that we remember the cast rule. And that should be good to help us get through uh, these next few questions. So let's now, let's have a look. All right, here we go. We're going to start answering some questions here. Now, specifically, the we're looking for the domain of 0 to 360. And I really really just want you to kind of get used to the the pattern um, that I use to approach these problems here. So here we start off with cosine of theta is equal to negative one half. So the very first thing that I'm going to do here is acknowledge the fact that this is negative. Cosine is related to the x-coordinate. The x-coordinate is negative in quadrants two and three. So I'm looking for two angles here. Okay, I'm looking for that angle and I'm looking for that angle right there. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find the angle inside the triangle, the reference angle, and that's going to be the inverse cosine of positive one half, not negative one half. Okay, the calculator is going to to deal with that a, a little bit differently with each of the trig functions. So just the positive one half here. The negative told me where to look. The po the the value is going to tell me how big it is. Okay, how big the angle is. And in this case here, when I take the inverse cosine of one half, I just got to think about that triangle there. Okay. If I look at this triangle right here, I'm looking for an adjacent being 1 and I, the hypotenuse being 2. Well, that's got to be this triangle, and 1 is adjacent to 60. So my reference angle is 60 degrees. Now, I need to put that into quadrant 2, and then I need to put that into quadrant 3. So 60 degrees in quadrant 2 is going to be 180 less 60. So 180 minus 60 is going to be 120 and then 180 plus 60 to get into quadrant three, and that's gonna end up being 240 degrees, okay? So those are the two angles we're looking for. Those are the two solutions to this problem, and I didn't need a calculator to do it. Okay, let's keep going here. Tangent, okay, tangent is equal to negative uh, one over root three. So now, first of all, I gotta think here, where is tangent negative? Well, that's quadrants two and four. So I'm looking for this angle right there and this angle right here. Okay. Then I got to concern myself with the size of the angle, not where it's located. I already know where it's located. I got to figure out how big that angle is going to be. So it'll be the inverse sine of one over root three. Sorry. Wow. Inverse tangent of one over root three. Okay. Well, the root three shows up in this triangle right here. So which angle has the opposite of 1 and the adjacent of, of root 3? And the answer is 30. So that means this right here is going to give me a reference angle of 30 degrees. That's the angle in the triangle. In quadrant 2, that's going to be 180. And then we go backwards 30 degrees. So 180 minus 30, 150. And then in quadrant 4, Remember, I'm going to wrap almost all the way around here. It would almost be 360, but I'm coming backwards again that, that 30 degrees. So this will be 330 degrees. And those are the two solutions that I'm looking for. Okay, next, sine of theta is equal to positive 1 over root 2. Sine is positive in quadrants 1 and 2. So I'm looking for this angle here and this angle here. Now I figure out the size of the angle. So I think where does sine, where do I get a, uh, the sine of an angle becoming 1 over root 2? Well, the root 2 shows up in this triangle right here. 1 over, well, it's got to be 45. Okay, it's got to be 45 degrees. In quadrant 1, that's the easy one because the reference angle is the same as the rotation angle. 
Okay. In quadrant one, the trigonometry is exactly the same as the trigonometry that you would have done in your last course. Okay. Exactly the same thing here. Uh, in quadrant two, that's going to be 180 degrees less that reference angle. So that's going to be 180 okay, minus 45, which is going to be 135 degrees. And there, again, those are the two angles we're looking for. Notice that we're, we're almost always going to get two angles here. Almost always. Then you come over to a question like this and things change just a little bit here because cosine of theta is equal to negative 1. Now, negative 1, and this is going to come with experience. If it, if it doesn't kind of jump right out at you right now, it will come with experience here. Because you might think of it like this. Cosine is negative in quadrants uh, 2 and 3. And that is true, but now I got to think, well, where does cosine go to negative 1? Well, it's, it's neither one of these triangles up here. Okay, it's not a 45 degrees, it's not 30 or 60. I mean, nowhere do I see cosine becoming 1, because cosine is always going to be the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Okay, so I'm not going to get a root 2 over root 2 here, and I'm not going to get a 2 over 2 here, so that eh, can't be it. So this actually has to be more of a quadrantal angle. So if it's a quadrantal angle, that means it's got to be on one of these, one of these axes. Cosine is related to the x-coordinate. So if I pick the circle, and I've done this time and time and again here, where I've, I've used the unit circle just because I'm, I'm lazy and I like, I like letting the radius go to 1, then all I'm interested in is where cosine, which is related to the x-coordinate, where x is equal to negative 1. And that's going to be right here. Right here, the angle is going to be 180 degrees. In fact, that is the only answer where that occurs. Okay, So it's, it's only with a very small number of exa uh, questions where you're only going to get one solution. But here's one of them, where the cosine of theta is equal to negative 1. We're in between quadrants 2 and 3. Let's take a look at another one here. Cosine of theta is equal to root 3 over 2. Okay. Cosine is a positive value. That's going to be true in 1 and 4. So I'm looking for this angle right here and this angle right here. Notice it's always from the positive x-axis. We're going to rotate up okay, or, or counterclockwise. Now I'm interested in the size of the angle. Now that I know where it is. So I'm going to look back up here. I'm looking for root 3 over 2, cosine. So I want the root 3 to be the adjacent got to be 30 degrees. Okay, it's got to be 30 degrees. So my theta in quadrant one is going to be 30 degrees. I love that because it's the same as the reference angle. And in quadrant four, I'd almost wrap all the way around, but I come back that 30 degrees. So 360 minus 30 degrees, 330 degrees. Okay. Tangent is undefined. Okay, well, we're not going to get an undefined value from either one of those uh, those two triangles here, okay, because there's no side there that becomes zero. So that's got to be one of those uh, angles around the unit circle, where r is equal to 1. Remember that tangent is defined to be the, the opposite side over the adjacent or the y-coordinate over the x. So as I go through this, what I'm looking for here is if tangent's only going to be undefined, when the x-coordinate is 0. Because okay, that's, that's the only time. Tangent is y divided by x. It's only division by 0 that's going to get me that. Well, that's either going to be here or here. 0, 1, or 0, negative 1. Okay? So either theta is going to equal to 90 degrees or 270 degrees. Those are the two answers, or the two angles that will get us a tangent that's undefined. Sine is equal to negative root 3 over 2. Okay, sine is negative. Sine is negative in quadrants 3 and 4. So it's either this angle right there or it's going to be that angle right there. Now i got to figure out the size. So it'll be the inverse sine of positive root 3 over 2. Okay, so I'm looking for the special triangle where the root 3 is the opposite side. So that's this triangle right here, and root 3 is opposite 60, so the angle that I'm looking for here is going to be 60 degrees. That's my reference angle. Now, i got to put that angle in quadrant 3. 
So it's going to be 180 plus 60. There's going to be 240. And then in quadrant four, I'm looking at 360 less that reference angle. So it's going to be 300 degrees. Okay, good. Tangent of theta is equal to zero. Ah, okay, again, that can't be coming from one of those special triangles because none of those sides is equal to zero. Here, I would want the y side or the opposite side to be equal to zero. So this has once again got to be one of these quadrantal angles. But now what I want is I want the y coordinate to be zero because zero divided by any number is going to be zero, okay? That's how I'm going to get the zero out of that. It's undefined if the x coordinate is zero. It's zero if the y coordinate is zero. And y goes to zero here and here. And so the two angles that I'm going to be interested in here will be zero degrees and 180 degrees. Except for one little thing, and this is actually almost a little cruel, but I, I do need you to pay attention to this. If you look back at the original question here, I'm looking for angles between 0 and 360, but also including 0 and 360. Oh, the fact that we're including 360 there, if 0 is an answer, then 360 automatically also becomes an answer in this particular que uh, case here, because the domain that I'm asking you the question in includes both of those. Now, in a lot of cases, you'll see that they won't. In a lot of cases, what they would do is they would say, I want the answer from 0 out to 360, but not including 360. Oops, sorry, you can't see it. Sometimes they'll do it like that. But in this particular case, they didn't, which means they're including it. So if, again, if zero is an answer, then so is 360, because they're basically the same angle. Okay, if the terminal arm points in the same spot, then trigonometrically, they look like the exact same angle. Okay, just a couple more here. And in this case here, uh, they're going to direct us in terms of the domain a little bit here. So in this question right here, we're being asked to look between 270 and 360. That's in quadrant four. So I'm looking for that angle right there. Ugh, they made it a little difficult for me. I got to, I got to solve for the cosine. Okay. Essentially what's going on here is I don't know what theta is, which means I haven't got a clue what the cosine of theta is. So I'm going to just treat that as X. So I'm just really, this is what I'm looking at to start off with. Let's, let's deal with the algebra before we deal with the trig. So bring the one over and then divide. So x is equal to one over root two. Now that I've dealt with the, the algebra part of this problem, now I'm gonna put the, co the trig back in. Okay, good. So now to solve this, normally I would ask myself what two quadrants is cosine positive in? And cosine is positive in quadrants one and four but I already know that I'm only looking in, in quadrant four, so that really wasn't an issue. Now I just gotta figure out how big that reference angle is. And if I think back at my triangles, the only triangle that had the root two in it was the 45, 45, 90, so this must be 45 degrees. And so in quadrant four, I wrap all the way around to 360, then come backwards 45, and that's gonna leave me with 315 degrees as the answer. Okay. And now finally, one last question here. And in this case, once again, they are they're directing us to look at uh, the quadrant between 90 and, and 180. So that's quadrant two. So I'm looking for this one. Uh, again, I got to really just deal with the algebra first here, but it turns out it's actually an incredibly simple thing to do. I'm just going to divide both sides by that three. So this will be negative three divided by three. So the tangent of theta here is gonna be negative one. And the, the interval that they're asking me to look in does correspond to the question because tangent is negative in quadrant two, so that's good. So now we just gotta figure out what the reference angle is, okay? By ignoring the sign, I don't need the sign anymore. I just need to know how big the angle is. I just need to look at the size. So the inverse tangent of one, okay? This is where I'm looking for the triangle where the side opposite and the side adjacent are the same number. In that case, that's the 45, 45, 90 triangle. So this is again gonna be 45 degrees. And so now I just have to put that into quadrant two. Okay, and that's gonna end up being 135 degrees. That's 180 minus 45. That's the angle we're looking for.